Hi guys, I am here with a Bible reading. I hope you're having a good day. Can you turn that up just a little bit? <laughs> sure, Marty picked out our today's prayer card. So we have today's and then we have one more. So today's prayer, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, which says, So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Which you're going to hear today. Happy Good Friday, everyone. I hope you guys have a great Good Friday. It is called Good Friday. Do you know why? It is called Good Friday because Jesus done a good thing for us by giving up his life for us. So the Friday before Easter is always known as Good Friday. And that is why. Because Jesus done a good thing for us by giving up his life for our sins. And then, of course, Sunday is Easter Sunday. So today, Jesus was hung on the cross many, many years ago today. And then he was put in the tomb. And then on Easter Sunday, that's why it is called Easter Sunday, Jesus rose from the dead. All right, so let's go over our prayer requests. So please keep the following people in prayer. Sherm. Rhonda Karshner, Cindy and Jim, Abby and Liam, Dora Carper, Jimmy Myers, Layla and her son Emil, Norma and Garnet Boyer, Elizabeth Jeffries and her grandson, um, Elizabeth's twin brother, had mental illness and suffered with it really bad. And he got it when he was like young. I think when he was 18, and Elizabeth's grandson's 18 now, and he has now been diagnosed with mental illness. I don't know what kind, but they are really worried about him. She's really worried about him. So please keep Elizabeth and her grandson in your prayers. Please uh, keep Ray and Don Dunlap in your prayers. Um, Bonnie Jean, Bonnie Jean's dad. Bonnie Jean's sister-in-law, Lori. Bonnie Jean's cat, Misty, that she returns home to Bonnie Jean. It doesn't matter if it's been years. We know that if it's God's will, he can always bring Misty home to Bonnie Jean. Please pray for Joyce Light and Judy Thompson. All right, guys. So now let's find my bookmark first. What could I do with Smokey? Come on, Smokey. You're always trying to get lost. Isn't he, Sharon? Yep. Just trying to prevent forest fires. I know it. Alright. So, let's see here. Today we're going to be reading Luke chapter 12, verses 8 through 34, continuing on with Psalm 78, with verses 32 through 55. And ending today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 12, verses 21 through 23. All right. So today in Luke, we'll be talking about the parable of the rich fool and do not worry. Okay. So Jesus says, I tell you, Whoever publicly acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever disowns me before others will be disowned before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, against Jesus, will be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do not worry about how you would offend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say, just like he did Stephen, remember? The one who they said had the face of an angel. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, 
Tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbitrator between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. That's a good one. They're all good, but listen to this. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. So he had a really good year. Think of a farmer with a really, really good year with his crops. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Just like Jesus was talking yesterday about how much, and you're valuable a lot more than sparrows and God doesn't forget not one of the sparrows who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life I have a bad problem with this with worrying no matter how much I try not to I've always been that way that's all I do that's all I do since you cannot do this very little thing, what do you worry of? Why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock. For your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And that is what we're stopping with the book of Luke today. I thought that was a good one. Okay, and we're continuing on with Psalm 78, verses 32 through 55. That is uh, another psalm of... This is when God freed the Hebrews, the Israelites, from the land of Egypt. You know, with the plagues. And we talked about going through how God divided the Red Sea and they, it, the water went up like a wall on both sides and dry land was in the middle and they passed through all of them safely to the other side. 
And then when the Egyptians started going through, God put the water of the Red Sea back down and they all drowned. So, and then it talks about how, see, God led them. He led them day and night. Day and night. He was always with them, day and night. He did not leave them, not one minute. He was with them constantly. They would turn their back on God. They'd get angry at God and say horrible things. And God would get angry at them. Sometimes Moses interceded on their behalf and God forgave them. Other times God punished them, but all, he always forgave them. He always, always forgave them. You, you ever wonder why? Why did it take them 40 years to get to the promised land? That's because they had to fight a lot of people to get certain lands and the wicked generation that kept turning their back on God and doing, treating God horribly after all he done. God waited for that generation to die out and let the next generation go in. He wasn't going to let that generation see the promised land after all they had done. That's what. So we're continuing on from there today. All right. In spite of all of this, they kept on sinning. In spite of his wonders, they did not believe. So he ended their days in futility and their years in terror. Whenever God slew them, they would seek him. They eagerly turned to him again. They remembered that God was their rock, that God Most High was their Redeemer. But then they would flatter him with their mouths, lying to him with their tongues. Their hearts were not loyal to him. Who do they think they were trying to fool? They actually think they could fool God? Nobody can fool God. Nobody can hide from God. Nobody can trick God. Nobody is better than God. Lying to him with their tongues, their hearts were not loyal to him. They were not faithful to his covenant. Yet he was merciful. He forgave their inequities and did not destroy them. Time after time, he restrained his anger. Now, if you read it, you, if you read that, you'd know. Yes, he did. He restrained his anger and did not stir up his full wrath. He remembered that they were but flesh, a passing breeze that does not return. How often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the wasteland. Again and again they put God to the test. They vexed the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember His power. The day He redeemed them from the oppressor. The day He displayed His signs in Egypt. The plagues, His wonders in the region of Zone. He turned their river into blood. They could not drink from their streams. He sent swarms of flies that devoured them and frogs that devastated them. He gave their crops to the grasshoppers, their produce, sorry, their produce to the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hell and their sycamore figs with sleet. He gave over their cattle to the hell, their livestock to bolts of lightning. He unleashed against them his hot anger his wrath, indignation, and hostility. A band of destroying angels, he prepared a path for his anger. He did not spare, he did not spare them from death, but gave them over to the plague. 
He struck down all the firstborn of Egypt. Yes, that even means Pharaoh's son. The first fruits of manhood in the tents of Ham. But he brought his people out like a flock. He led them like sheep from the wilderness. He guided them safely so that they were unafraid. But the sea engulfed their enemies. And so he brought them to the border of his holy land, to the hill country his right hand had taken. He drove out nations before them and allotted their lands to them as an inheritance. He settled the tribes of Israel in their homes. And that is where we're stopping with Psalm 78 today. And that is talking about, let's see here, what part did I want to say? There's a part I wanted to talk to you guys about. Oh, you're thinking, if it killed all the firstborns in the plague, how did it not take the firstborns of the Hebrews, of the Israelites? Because that is what's known as Passover. What is Passover? Well, when they were in Egypt, God told them, take lamb's blood and smear it over the entrance outside their door. And death, when it came that night to take the firstborns, it would, it would see the lamb's blood on their doors the top part of their door and pass over them. Death would pass by them if they seen the lamb's blood and none of their firstborns would be taken. And they did and it was so. But like I said, the Egyptians didn't know that. And Pharaoh's son is one of the ones who was killed. His firstborn son. All right. Now we're ending today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 12, verses 21, 22, and 23. Proverbs 12, 21 says, No harm overtakes the righteous, but the wicked have their fill of trouble. Proverbs 12, 22, The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. Proverbs 12, 23, the prudent keep their knowledge to themselves, but a fool's heart blurts out folly. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless. Happy Good Friday.